Good morning, campers! It's time to rise and shine in the beautiful, colorful, cool Colorado Rockies! everybody, I'm Tara Wellman. and this is Bird Seeds. The Cardinals are hanging in there, and that fine little intro is a throwback to my past. I went to a summer camp every year as a teenager in the Colorado Rockies, and that delightful gem was the wake-up call that would be announced over the loudspeaker every single morning. And it sounds annoying, but it's actually very nostalgic. I loved that camp. I love Colorado. I love the Rockies, the mountain variety. So I kind of always have a soft spot for the Rockies of the baseball variety, but not when they're playing my Cardinals. Sorry, not sorry. But about those Cardinals, this was not a great week. Um, not really the follow-up to a rough homestand that we would have liked to see. But I mean, at least they did manage to avoid getting swept by the Giants at home, because that would have been brutal. But then they did waste a one-run, eight-inning gem of a game by Lance Lynn, matching almost pitch-for-pitch pitch with Clayton Kershaw in LA, that then turned into yet another 13-inning loss. Which was, by the way, the third 13-inning loss for the Cardinals in eight days. So yeah, the bullpen is an issue, and we'll get to that some other time, I'm sure, but the offense, like, whoa. So not only did they only score the one run of that opening game with the Dodgers on a wild pitch by Clayton Kershaw and a mad dash from second base, by Randall Gritchick, so it wasn't like the offense really did a whole lot of work there. But then they couldn't even manage to score in the series opener in Colorado, where literally everyone can score. So what is it that's going wrong besides just everything? Well, in the last seven days, Dexter Fowler has four hits in 25 at-bats with two walks and five strikeouts. And Steven Piscotty, who moved up to the number two spot after coming off the DL, because that makes sense, has two hits in 14 at-bats. Quick sidebar, I really genuinely hope that everything is okay with Steven Piscotty and his family, and that whatever it was that caused him to leave the team can be resolved in a timely manner, but more importantly, in a way that everyone is okay. Everything is okay. But I really do think this might shed a little bit of light on why he's looked like he's been anywhere but the field mentally the last couple of weeks because nothing in life is more important than making sure that the people you love are taken care of and baseball can't possibly be a priority when the rest of your real life isn't right. So I'm glad that he left to take care of it and I really genuinely hope that everything works out okay. And then there's Matt Carpenter, the three-hole hitter who doesn't know how to run the bases and really likes to argue the strike zone lately. He has four hits in 19 at-bats, with a couple walks thrown in there. Let me do the math for you if you didn't add all that up in your head. That's 10 hits in 58 at-bats from the top three in the order. That's not great. The good news is uh, Lemnus Diaz has actually turned it up a notch. He picked up seven hits, six of which were doubles on the week, and added three walks to that total, which if you watched him not able to take walks at the beginning of the year, that's a pretty decent improvement. And then there's Tommy Pham, who just keeps plugging away with an on-base percentage of 529 on the week, a slugging percentage of 667. He had a big home run in the second game with the Colorado Rockies. Basically, he's making good contact and he's getting on base. It's just he and Diaz are kind of the only ones. Okay, don't freak out on me. I know that Yadier Molina also had seven hits this week, but he had 10 more at-bats to do it in than Tommy Pham did, so... Putting on my John Mozeliak GM hat, or actually more like a bow tie, right? What is the fix? Is this a John Mabry thing? I mean, we've kind of been saying that it is for the last couple of years, but it's still really hard to find some sort of quantifiable evidence to assign blame there. Is this a roster problem? Well, in short, kind of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you give your regular three-hole hitter the day off and your only 
option to replace him, at least in the eyes of Mike Matheny, is Yadier Molina, then there's some pretty glaring weaknesses in the roster. But how do you fix that? Really, do you even try? From where I'm sitting, there are really two ways to look at this. First of all, the Cubs aren't as good as everyone expected them to be. They're not as good as they were last year. The NL Central is really wide open. And maybe this isn't the lost year that it looked like it would be for the Cardinals. So they could try to win because they really have a genuine chance. But it's going to mean probably parting with some guys that are likable, that are hardworking, that have been in the organization all of their careers, that are actually talented even, in order to change things up. Listen, whether you like the manager or not, and I'm pretty sure most of you are on the side of not liking him, I really don't think he's going anywhere. But players can. I talked last week about how we as fans tend to expect a lot out of how our favorite team does business. Well, in this case, if we expect that this front office will try to be competitive this year to build a winning team, then we probably also have to come to the conclusion that we can expect to have to part with some of the guys that we've really come to like. Not because they aren't talented or charming <laughs> in their own right, but because in order to get value in a trade, you're gonna have to give up value. If this team really does need a major shakeup to go out and win games consistently this year, brace yourselves, because we might not all like the guys they choose to send away in order to get some of those wins in return. The other option for John Mozeliak is to just kind of buy his time and see what happens this season without a whole lot of immediate or intentional changes, and then plan for a focused, determined effort to make a run in a year or so. Maybe in 2019, the Cardinals will go hard after one of those big free agents that'll finally be available and they'll finally not finish second. <coughs> All joking aside though, this is a way less fun option for the fans, but it's not totally stupid. I mean, the Cubs could still be extremely good by the end of the year. The Cardinals could still finish double digits behind. But two years from now, when the Cubs dynasty has had a couple more years to fall apart, when Magniri Sierra and Paul DeYoung, P.S. Welcome to the Big Leafs, kid. Also get well soon, Colton. And Alex Reyes and whatever superstar free agent signing comes along are the centerpieces of the Cardinals new young core. Maybe that's the time to throw caution to the wind and go all in. The reality is that Mo probably can't, or at least won't, do both. Win now, on purpose, or purposefully just wait it out. Plan to win later and take whatever victories come along the way. These are the things that would keep me awake all night, every night, if I was a general manager. So Mo, I do not envy your position, but that won't likely stop me from criticizing whatever decision you make. <laughs> so what say you? Would you prefer a deep, if unlikely, run this year at the expense of some young talent down the road? Or are you cool with just kind of waiting it out and then going hard after a major run two years from now? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below or on Twitter, whatever you prefer. I'm Tara Wellman, and I'll see you next time on Bird Seeds.